Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're going to look at flying an ILS approach in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 using the A320neo. I am a real world Airbus pilot and uh, hopefully this can bring some extra context to what you're doing with your home simulations on Flight Simulator but it's not for any real world use of course. If you need any help with some basics of the autopilot I have some videos available on that already and there will be more to come uh, so let's get started with flying an ILS. We're going to do this in Heathrow, so we've set off from Gatwick and I've got a little introduction which I'll show you in just a moment to show you how I set up the flight and then uh, hopefully shortly after that you'll be in the flight deck with me as we set up the approach. So our first technique is going to be by having a flight plan preloaded into the Airbus. I'm going to go to Flight Simulator, World Map and I'm going to select my departure airport today and just for this little flight we'll just do a short quick flight from Gatwick in London to Heathrow in London, EGLL. And now to make sure we have something loaded into the box, I'm going to put low altitude airways as the uh, route. Now it doesn't really have any airways because they're too close together, but what I can do is choose departures. So from runway 26 left at Gatwick, I'm just going to put in a uh, random departure just to get me going. So big in to X-ray, which turns around here. Uh, and seems to eventually lead to Heathrow, probably via Biggin somewhere over here. Uh, and then I can go to Heathrow, Arrivals, and I'm going to choose one that goes roughly near Biggin. So let's try Biggin 1 Zulu, there we go. And they connect up. Now it doesn't matter if they don't connect up too much because we can do some directs. Uh, and then I'm also going to choose the ILS, ILS 27 left. And now I have a sort of complete route which should go via these points and background and in. Uh, and it goes from Biggin. Um, so this is just a way to do it between these two airports, but you can go into any route you want, load up the airways, and if you select the departures and runway, you'll know what's going on in advance. So now we're going to go and fly. Flight conditions will be set to live weather and everything else off for me today, just to keep the video focused. Off we go. Right, so here we are now, and we are in flight 5,000 feet. We've taken off out of London Gatwick. And we need to look at how we're going to make our approach into Heathrow. Now we want to fly an ILS approach today. Uh, if I go to plan on this uh, control up here and then wind out the range, I can actually see here roughly what route we're flying. So as you can see, as per what we loaded in before, the route takes us around south, KK uh, E38 and background and in. I'm not sure where they get the names of some of these points. I don't really recognize some of these, but uh, there we go. Rounds back in and then it's going to fly an ILS. We can also zoom in with that range up there down to 10 and now in the MCDU if I press flight plan and then I can actually scroll through each one using this arrow here and it will scroll to each point and show me the green line which is what I expect the aircraft to fly. Now one thing we need to do is make sure we're on the correct altitude. At the moment I have QNH of 29902 which is an American setting it's in inches and other parts of the world use it as well. But in uh, Europe, especially here in London, we'll be using HBA hectopascals. Now I need to find out what the QNH setting is at the airport I'm landing at to go and fly an ILS properly. Uh, the reason is that changes depending on the pressure on that day. So you want to set this to the correct one for the airport and then you know your altitude above sea level, which is what is displayed here. To do that in Flight Simulator, you can go to uh, ATC and select nearest airport list. I'm going to select London Heathrow. If I can find it, maybe I'll make this window a bit bigger, make life a bit easier for myself. Do, do, do. Wow, there's loads of airports near us, aren't there? Where is it? Where has it gone? Heathrow. EGLL. Then I'm going to tune Heathrow ATIS. ATIS is what uh, pilots use to get the weather. So if I tune the Heathrow ATIS, there's two different frequencies, one will be arrival, one will be departure, and then it's going to read out the ATIS to me. So I can find out the QNH from this. Advise control 
So that has given us some idea of the weather and also the runways in use and that's what pilots would typically use. It's important to take a few things from this. We need to make sure we have a copy of the temperature which is 18 degrees in this one, the wind which is 216 at 35 and the Q&H which is 29 at 68. Once you've done that you can press back or um, maybe you, you want to tune Heathrow Tower, pick an approach, something like that. Um, just to get off that frequency. If you're using air traffic for your flight, then it will happily radar vector you, I think, to some extent, although I haven't used it. But for this video, for the first part, we're just going to keep following our green line. So I set this back to arc, and I can see it's following this line, which just give me time while it does that. It's going to climb mode, and it's going to climb up to 6,000 feet. Because I've got CSTR pressed up here, I can see the constraints, and it wants me to be at 6,000 feet at that waypoint. If I go back to plan, I can see the altitude at each waypoint. So it wants 3,000 feet at ILL10, which is the India Lima Lima at 10 miles, which is the ILS, which is just over here. Now, we'll get onto that shortly, but first thing I want to do is make sure this is set correctly because we should be at 6,000 feet, which means we need to have this set. So they told us it was 2968. So now it says Q and H. I'm going to set it to 2968. Now you can just leave it like that, and that would be fine because that is correct. The simulator seems to only work in uh, inches at the moment. But I can also select hectopascals and it stays, so that is QNH1005. So it transfers across, so that's what I'll do today. I'm going to leave it on QNH1005. Now again, I've talked about the autopilot in the past. There's some things here that aren't quite right, so I'm just going to force it to do 6,000 feet in open climb so that I know it's going to stay at 6,000 as I want it. So a good rule of thumb for flying an ILS is that we want to be uh, 3,000 feet, about 10 miles away. And that is shown here on our constraints. So that is uh, a useful idea. That's typical of a three degree ILS. And that's 3,000 feet above the ground. So the ground in London is only about 100 feet above sea level. So that's uh, pretty much the same. So now we've got the weather and we've looked at uh, the altitude we want to be at, what I'm going to do is put that weather into the MCDU. So we need to program this. Now I've done nothing to this since takeoff pretty much. So this is, should be how you find it if you enter the route from uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator loading page. Press the uh, perf button and that will bring you to this page. And it's in the cruise phase at the moment because we're just in the cruise. But if I press next phase down here through the descent and then I get approach. And here I need to enter the weather we just took a note of. So the temperature was 18 degrees, so I'm just going to type in 18 and select it into there. Q and H was 2968. Now, we don't use that, so we're going to use 1005 to type in here. So there it goes. Wind was 216 at 35, so it's a really windy day. That is quite a good crosswind as well, actually. So that is the weather loaded in. We're going to land config full, so I have full selected here. You can select config 3 and then you would land with flaps 3, but we're going to land at flaps full. Right, next thing we're going to do is have a look at the charts. So I use Navigraph for my charts, which I have here, and as you can see, uh, I've already got London set up and ready. So I've selected London Heathrow Airport, and now we're going to do the RNS for 27 left. That's what we've already uh, decided on. So I'm going to go to Approach, RNS DME on Localizer, Runway, and then here's runway 27 left and it brings up the chart now this is not absolutely required and there are free versions of these sorts of things available there's various youtube videos about how to get hold of those um, but this is what pilots will use to get the information they need about safety about terrain and it will also include if i wanted to i could find that uh, star which will be the arrival um, somewhere in here by picking will be displayed but that's not the issue for now we're just going to look at flying this rls so as I can see on here, I said 3,000 feet at 10 miles, and the chart tells me at 7.5, I need to be at 2,500 feet, so that's about right, three degree approach. So as I said, on a three degree approach, it's about 300 feet per mile away from the runway. So from a 3,000 feet platform altitude, I want to be at uh, 10 miles away. You can just use your three times table for this. If you're at 2,000 feet, times it by three, and then that would mean six miles away, I would need to start my descent. So that's a rough idea of what we're going to do. There's some more information about the go around and so on, which we won't cover today. And I can also get the minima. So cat one minima 277. So if I go back into Flight Simulator, I am going to 
enter that minima 277 into MDA because it's a decision altitude as we see on the charts page it's a decision at altitude not a um, height the height is 200 feet right so now we have this page set up and then the next page will be for the go arounds and it's going to thrust reduce and accelerate at 1500 feet which is all fine and as normal next thing we need to do because we're going to fly on RLS is press LS to bring up these landing or these scales here which show us the RLS display as we get closer in they should show us little magenta diamonds to show us where the localized and anchorized slope are I'm going to land with medium water break and we've already discussed flat full and from here I can now let the aircraft fly along that green line and if I zoom out I'll see where it's going to go Uh, and it's a bit of a, a wonky line, I'm not sure what's going on around here. Now in the real aircraft, you can press direct and then choose a point. Unfortunately, the last point I can go direct to is Biggin. So I'm going to try that. So I select it there and then press insert. But then it just seems to get even more confused. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing this. So when if you have a route that works properly, unlike this one which seems to have gotten really confused it goes big and then dorky and again in the real aircraft you could clear out these waypoints oh there we go that seems to have helped so that's cleared so i've cleared out that extra waypoint big in usr and then ill 10. can i clear out usr as well no it doesn't let me it doesn't seem to let me fiddle with things after big in um so the stars yeah there you go so it's back to where it was but that's fine um, so we're going to see what it does. We can follow this green line around and then as we turn over this point, all in nav, because we're in nav mode, uh, and then we can, what we'll do is arm the approach push button up here. And that way it should capture the localizer and then the glide slope. For that to work though, you need to be on the localizer first. An alternative is you can press localizer and insert the localizer and then once you've done that, press the approach and it will arm the glide slope as well. So what we'll do is accelerate time a bit and go and have a look at that. Something we need to do before beginning our approach is activate the approach phase. In the MCDU, I press Perth, it would appear here as you saw earlier, and you can just press activate and then activate again. It actually does it automatically when you pass the D cell point, which I think it's done here. At, uh, it's got D cell written there. It shows up as a, a magenta uh, D written on the real aircraft, but there it is, D cell. So it seems to have activated the approach phase on its own. If it doesn't, press Perth and activate the approach phase. You have to press it twice. That way, now it will target green dot only when we're in managed speed again if you need help with the basics of the autopilot i do have a video on that so i'm going to go to managed speed now and you can see i've given control of the speed to the air pass so now it should target green dot speed which would be here sadly it seems to go slightly below sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't the good news is what has happened is the autopilot uh, sorry the ILS has shown up now ILL which was the name of the ILS we saw from our chart if I bring that up again you can see that uh, it's called the ILL and it has the uh, DME 109.5 uh, sorry the frequency 109.5 and it has a DME so that's great now I need to work out the altitude I want to be at well I want to be 3,000 feet there so using my chart I can work out what's safe and that's what the real pilots will do or air traffic will tell you in this case I'm not using air traffic control, so I'm going to go down to 3,000 feet myself. So there we go, DES, and I've got 3,000, and it's descending, open DES. Now again, the real aircraft would give an out blue here just to show that it's going to level off at 3,000, but this one doesn't always seem to do that. So that's good. We've activated the approach phase, which is very important. We're displaying the ILS on here, and we've set the Q&H. So these are things we need to have done to be able to fly an ILS. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I arm the approach button as I said earlier and we'll see if it flies around this green line onto the ILS for us. Now we are reaching our 3000 feet altitude which is what's called the platform altitude, that's where we're going to intercept the ILS from. So I'm going to start slowing down for all these turns. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing this. In real life, I would want to go direct to that uh, ILL 10 to avoid that uh, squiggle. So let's go flap one. Because we've activated the approach phase, when I do that, it should slow down to the next green S speed. So I'll show you what I mean. So 
to check it's safe to put the flaps out make sure you're below these amber equal signs that is the flap limit speed so that is for flap one there's that start so it is leveling at 3000 so i'm going to do that now because i am below that speed flaps go to one now the airplane should slow down to its s speed which would probably be somewhere around 180 knots although again i think this shows it slightly lower which i'm not sure why yeah it's got it down here for some reason but i'm leaving it in managed speed and it seems to be doing okay 180 knots flap one is probably about what you'd expect in an a320 as you can see it's not doing a great job of these lines at the moment i'm hoping it will give up on the usr and go to ill 10 otherwise we'll have to do this in heading mode which is probably how you would expect to do it in real life quite windy here you can see up here the wind 40 knots so it is a breezy approach no i don't think that's going to work okay that's fine so what we'll do is we're going to take over and do this in heading which will be the same as if air traffic was vectoring you so let's pull heading it goes into heading mode and now we are going to head 090 which is effectively the opposite direction to the runway the wind is now blowing us slightly towards the extended center line that's called but that's fine i want to get myself so that i'm further than 10 miles away from the runway so i want to be past this point and then i can turn around and point in towards it still enjoying those excellent graphics of uh, london out there and i have now got the uh, orb x london scenery which should have added a few buildings although i haven't tested that out yet okay so as you can see we are now 13 miles away and facing away from the airport i can show you this on the map page so that was our expected route there's the rns so now i can turn in myself using heading so let's bring the heading round to face north something of note is that i want to be flap one by the time i'm roughly intercepting that localizer so that's about 10 miles away from the runway i want to be flat one and by the time i'm on the glide slope and within about uh, eight miles i want to be flat two and certainly by the time i'm 2,000 feet above the ground i definitely want to be flat two i'm going to do all of this using manage speed but i could of course select the speed so if i pull this little arrow back i can choose the speed i want to fly but i'm going to leave it in manage for now as it seems to be working so there's north and now i'm going to keep turning left and intercept so I'm going to turn to 300 degrees. Air traffic control normally won't give you an intercept heading more than 30 degrees off from the runway. So the runway is heading 270 degrees, effectively west. So air traffic control would give you no more than uh, 330 degrees on top of 270 is 300. Now we're pointing in, I'll show you what I mean. I can press lock and now I'm just arming the localizer and the airplane should intercept this diamond as it comes in. I could have just pressed approach but uh, I'm just showing you this way. So now it looks like, yes, it's turned through the heading and it's following this. Now the real aircraft, and it should, I think, definitely display it. It's a shame it doesn't. It should say lock here to tell me what this is following because now it says heading, but it's definitely not following the heading. But there we go. We are now on the localizer. So before we reach that glide slope, which is currently above us, which we can see here, I'm going to arm the approach. So I press that. And now glide slope does exactly what I would expect. It shows up in blue, so it's armed. And then as that glide slope comes down, I expect this to change from glide slope blue to glide slope green. And we're going to start down the ILS. When we pass through an altitude of 2,500 feet, we'll see some numbers appear down here, which will show us the radio altimeter, which measures directly the, altitude, the height in feet of you above the ground by pinging a radio signal down to the ground and back up again. Right, so the glide slope is starting to move. As I said, I'm currently flat one, which is fine. We're about 12 miles away from the runway. From 3,000 feet, we reckoned that we would start our descent about nine miles because three times three is nine. If we were 2,000 feet, it would be about six miles. But remember, that's all because we are 3,000 feet above the ground. If London was sat at elevation, so if it was 500 feet above the ground, then that would be different. That would mean we are at 2,500 feet. So it looks like it's actually going to intercept considerably earlier than expected because we're at 10 miles here and that number maybe it's going to work out let's see it's not perfectly 9.0 it'll be somewhere close to so this is actually not too bad and here we go reaching the glide slope 
And there it goes. So it's in glide slope mode. So it just I just wish it said localizer. They got it for the glide slope. Um, what I'm going to do is bring the heading bug around to roughly what we're on, 270. I mean, again, you don't have to do that in real life because once you have these dashes, you, it doesn't just play. But there we are. And you can see, because the wind is from the left, we're pointing slightly to the left to maintain that localizer. So it is managing. That's great. Now we're on the localizer, and at 9 miles, I'm going to go to flat 2. So same again. Check that you're below the amber equal sign. And then we can select flat 2. Okay, there's 2,500 feet, so the radio altimeter has come alive, which is what we would expect, which is really good. In the real aircraft, you can actually engage both autopilots at this point, but it doesn't work in the sim. Only one side works. Now it's showing us our minimum 277, which we've written in there, which is great. And now, for the rest of it, I would recommend if you were to put the wheels out by about 6 miles, anywhere from 5 to 6 miles from the runway. That way you'll have plenty of time to put out the last bits of flap so you're fully configured for landing. We can see in here that our approach speed is 150. That seems pretty fast so we're going to see, I think these numbers are slightly wrong. The distances I just gave for configuring are not rules, they're just something that might help you if you're not sure uh, of some distances. That That's a rough idea of a normal approach in an Airbus. But that's not a rule, there are other ways of doing it and people will have different opinions on that, I'm sure. Right, there's six miles, so we'll go gear down. When the gear goes down on the Airbus, we're going to arm the speed brakes so they are armed. If that's disarmed and you lift it up, then that's armed. And then we also turn on the nose wheel light, so that's the runway turn up and this can go to, actually it'll be on taxi for landing. Now we've done that, we're going to go to flaps 3, again checking the speed, we are below those amber dots, flaps 3, and once more, now the speed is finally reducing, and you can see I haven't had to change that speed, the whole time it's in managed, um, and now I'm going to put up flap 4, and there it is. So now we are in speed, glide slope, it is following the localizer even though it says heading, fully configured, and that is our V approach. Now as you can see, I'm not sure about these speeds, it says it wants to fly 145 knots, Seems quite fast. You'd expect it to be a bit nearer this yellow line here. This is called VLS. And I'd expect it to be a bit closer. Um, but it's within 15 knots, so that's not unreasonable. You could fly an approach like this. There's a thousand feet, so commonly for airlines they'll want you to be stabilized by around a thousand feet, which we are, because we are fully configured. We're at our approach speed and we are on the profile. And now you can see we've got our localizer, our glide slope. We've got the go around altitude there, which is 3,000 feet. I think the chart would actually show that as 2,000 feet for this when, for this approach. So let's put 2,000 in there. Now in the real aircraft, again, that would change. It doesn't in here, but that's fine. And now we're going to get ready for our final approach. So looking out the window, we get this fantastic view in the Airbus. It's, uh, yeah, amazing. I use space bar to go up into this view, which I think does give a much better representation of what you see out the window when you are flying. And now we're going to go ahead and land. So autopilot off. Oh, not like that. Like that. Getting used to the controls still. Okay, looking out the window, aiming for sort of the middle of this touchdown zone. Flaring at 30 feet. Idling the thrust. Kicking off some of that drift. There's touchdown. Nose wheel down. Get the reverses out. A bit hard to do with uh, all these different controllers I'm trying to use. And medium auto brake has engaged. We've got reverses green and the diesel light is up here. Again, that diesel light should show up on the medium because that's what we're using. But there we go. Through 70 knots, make sure you're at reverse idle. And now I'm going to disengage the auto brake and taxi clear the runway. That's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Quite a long video today, so do let me know in the comments what you prefer to see, whether it's these slightly longer, more detailed videos or something a bit shorter. As always, there are differences here to real life, so nothing I've shown here can be used in real life. It's just to give you a rough idea of the sort of things we do and look for when we go flying the aircraft. But this is just for our use in Flight Simulator. There are still some major differences in the way the uh, simulator works. There'll be more videos and tutorials to come. Uh, we'll look at the Airbus as it gets updated, as well as all the other features and uh, taking off and landing, that sort of thing. So if you'd like to see those, do please subscribe. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you again in another video soon, and I uh, hope you keep safe and well. Thank you very much for watching.